I would say what's next, not what to do, how can we uh, struggle or face you know, these issues? Well, first of all, it's a political issues. It's a matter of this escalation. It's a matter of um, avoiding feeding you know, all the people, all the communities, all the imams, all the thinkers, religious thinkers, all these activists, you know, um, justifying or framing all these social relations, all these political issues, geopolitical issues, you know, a very, very, very Islamic radical way. So it's a matter, you know, of listen, listening to Muslim voices. It's a matter of giving space, giving room, you know, giving legitimacy to all the people who may have grievances, they may have, they may be very critical. I mean, when it comes to the U.S. foreign policy, when it comes to Israel-Palestine, when it comes to the support, you know, uh, to some Arab regimes or authoritarian regimes, but they have some legitimate, you know, grievances. So this idea of not dividing the political field into two spheres, let's say the jihadists and the radicals on the one hand, and the good, so-called good people on the other hand, you know, it's one of the key uh, recommendations that my group and all the members and my colleagues and I, you know, we are happy, you know, to provide. But this idea of listening to Muslim voices, of re-empowering, reinforcing, consolidating all the people, you know, who have some social support. It's not a matter when you have, when your ideology basically is influential or start to be seen as influential, as successful, it's first of all a matter of having a social support. It's because, because you have hundreds, thousands, or even sometimes millions of people look at Syria, you know, of people, of social families, of individuals, of, uh, once again, it's first of all a matter of young generations, but well, uh, anyway, it's how some people, you know, are likely to integrate and to believe and to admit the idea that the radical ideology um, is good, ultimately, is good, is, has some positive values. And we tend to forget because we see that ISIS, for example, they are committing huge, I mean, war crimes or even crimes against humanity and so on and so forth, which is true. But do not forget the so-called positive side. Do not forget, for example, that in Syria and Iraq and Yemen, and they are some kind of violent humanitarian people. They provide good resources. They provide security. They provide, I mean, a very, very, let's say, um, strong psychology. If you are a young man or even more increasingly a woman, but uh, if you are a young, let's say, uh, man in Morocco today, if you are um, positively, you know, uh, committed to your own community, the Islamic, the famous uh, Islamic Ummah. So do not forget that, I mean, the prevention is very important. Um, of course, when I'm mentioning the fact that this, escal this escalation is very important, it has to do with the nonviolent Salafists. It's because, I mean, it's like, you know, you, we need to pressurize, we need to say that all the people, you know, advocating for hatred, advocating for, uh, I mean, discriminations, advocating for pushing for um, social divides, social struggles, I mean, um, sectarianism and so on, it's important. But it's ultimately, I will call it a secondary issue, because the first thing is how or to, for what reasons, you know, some social communities, some social groups, some individuals, they get attracted. I mean, the context within which an actor, a man, a woman, a group, you know, feels um, committed, feels appealed, you know, to a radical ideology, that's the main thing, you know, we, and people in my group and I, you know, uh, we are um, pushing for a better understanding. So this idea, you know, ultimately, so I, Okay, that's great. That's my conclusion. Um, so this idea, you know, of challenging, you know, this jihadist, this jihadist connection, this new a new generation of jihadist thinking, of jihadist conduct, you know, it's first of all, you know, by using, by promoting what I would call a society-oriented approach. So, of course, I mean, treaties are important, uh, diplomacy is important, and so on and so forth. But the main idea that I would like you, of course, to, um, to get, you know, is the fact that jihadists have been very, very likely, very, very good, you know, in turning, you know, social and political issues to religious, you know, um, struggles. And these connections need to be broken before we can expect, you know, some um, improvement in the region and all over the world.